guys, it's Michelle. Welcome back to my cooking channel. Today I have a request. I'm making a meatloaf using Beyond Meat. Now this intrigues me. I've never done it before, but I was a vegetarian for a very long time and we still uphold a lot of the principles in our household of vegetarianism. So I'm looking forward to making this today and this one goes out to all my vegetarian and vegan friends. Come cook with me. Our ingredients today will be extra virgin olive oil, some quick cooking oats, an onion, Beyond Beef. This is a pound of Beyond Beef. A bell pepper, garlic paste, Italian seasoning, paprika, bay leaves, cumin. I have some soy sauce, tomato sauce, plain breadcrumbs, and maple syrup. So let's get to mixing all this together. Okay. I did some rethinking about my spices, so we'll talk about that when we get there. I'm going to put some olive oil in a hot pan, and I'm going to get our onions sauteing. Now, I was looking at the maple syrup and soy sauce. And then the cumin, and I was like, nope, this isn't going to work. So instead, I mixed together two teaspoons of brown sugar, a tablespoon of paprika, um, about half a teaspoon of black pepper, a fourth of a te teaspoon of salt, a um, quarter teaspoon of chili powder, also a quarter teaspoon garlic powder, uh, half a teaspoon of onion powder, and an eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. And what I was left with is kind of like a barbecue type seasoning. Had I used smoked paprika, it would have brought some smokiness to it, but that's not the flavor profile I was going for. I think it would work though. But you're left with something like this, um, this is a tablespoon of it. It actually was maybe two, two and a half tablespoons worth. So it's actually perfect for this recipe. So I'm going to continue cooking this down until it's translucent. So a couple minutes for this, I would say up to five. And then I'm going to add our bell pepper. Everything is finely chopped at this point. Okay, now you see I've gotten some color on my onions. This is actually half of the onion you guys saw earlier. You can do um, one whole medium onion or half of an onion, half a large onion. This is not burned. This is nice and brown. I decided to give this more flavor than just with a translucent onion. So I'm going to add our half of that orange bell pepper. You can use green, you can use red, you can use yellow, whichever ones you have. And I'm going to add three cloves, the equivalent of three cloves of garlic. And we want to cook this down. Let's see if I can get it all out of here. We want to cook this down and make it nice and soft so we can mix this in with our beef substitute. All right, our mixture is done. I'm gonna set that to the side so it can start cooling down. It doesn't have to be completely cool, but we're gonna let it cool down as much as possible. And we're gonna start mixing all of our other ingredients so we can make the meat. So here I have the pound of Beyond Beef Substitute, Beyond Meat, excuse me. I'm going to put a tablespoon of our seasoning blend that we did. I have the quick cook oats, two thirds of a cup. I have a cup of 
breadcrumbs. Let's get the whole cup in there. I have Italian seasoning. I believe that's two teaspoons. A tablespoon of maple syrup. And we have some soy sauce. Start mixing this. It seems like it's a lot of breading, guys. For a regular meatloaf, we wouldn't need so much bread. But this isn't really meat, so we need to build it up somehow, and it has to stick together. Now to this, I'm going to add the peppers and the onions. Our mixture is still hot, so I'm going to continue mixing this down with a spoon instead of getting my hands in there, since I don't want to burn myself. And then I'm going to transfer it into a baking pan. Um, let's see what I have. I think I have a nine a nine inch pan somewhere. So I'm going to transfer it into the baking pan. My oven is preheated it's already at 375 i forgot to start with that so let me get this thoroughly mixed and get the pan out you know i'm sitting here trying to mix this and wondering why it's so dry um tomato sauce guys we're using a cup of tomato sauce this will help get it all nice and moist and incorporated and it'll make it look more like meatloaf. Okay, so now I'm going to finish mixing this up and get it into the pan. All right, I mixed that up and it actually does feel like meat. Um, I pressed it into a bread pan, one of those bread loaf pans, and I did grease it with some olive oil. And I'm going to add a mixture of a tablespoon of that spice blend and three quarters cup of tomato sauce. This is gonna be our glaze. Typically, I would use ketchup, but I don't know, I wanted to fancy it up a little bit since this is not a typical meatloaf. I actually never liked the ketchup thing over the meatloaf until recently. Sometimes I mix it up a little, put some ketchup and um, some buffalo sauce. I'm sorry, not buffalo sauce, some barbecue sauce. All right, I'm gonna stick this in the oven. Remember, it's at a 375 degree oven. Guys, I missed one crucial step. We have to cover this with foil. So I'm gonna cover it with foil and then stick it into a 375 degree oven for 45 minutes. Okay, after this has been in here for all that time, we're gonna uncover it and continue to bake it for an extra 15 minutes. While the meatloaf is in the oven, I figured we need a side, so let's make some creamed spinach. We're gonna need extra virgin olive oil, the other half of that large onion, two cloves of garlic, I'm going to use about half a cup of Parmesan cheese. I have two bags of spinach. Um, I have butter. I have cream cheese. And I have half a cup of milk plus a quarter cup of heavy cream. So in this nice hot pan, I am going to put some of the olive oil. And I'm going to start frying up the onion just like we did the last time and get this to brown up a little bit. So now that the onion has cooked down, become translucent and is starting to get a little bit caramelized, not really brown, I'm going to add the two cloves of garlic. I'm going to add these in here and I'm going to let this cook for one minute. 
after one minute. If you, we had already boiled down our spinach, I would say add the heavy cream, but I'm skipping the boiling down the spinach step and I'm gonna cook it this way. All right, okay, and this is both bags. And as you can tell, it's wilting down nicely. If I had a third bag, I would use, I think with this base, the amount of onions and, and garlic and cream and everything, you can go up to four bags. The bags are like five ounces each. It seems like a lot in the bag, but once you start cooking it down, it's really not that much. It starts wilting down nicely. So since this is wilted, I'm gonna open a hole here. And I'm gonna add about four ounces of cream cheese. That's half the, the packet. And I'm gonna start stirring this up, getting it melted. And to this, I am going to add the milk. It's half a cup of milk and a quarter cup of heavy cream. And I'm gonna keep mixing this around make sure that cream cheese melts nicely. At this point, while you're waiting for that cream cheese to melt, we're gonna add salt and pepper. So use salt and pepper to taste. I am gonna cheat this time and put a little bit of pepper. and a pinch of cayenne pepper. My mom's gonna say, you're trying to kill me. I didn't add enough on there for her to even taste it, but for some reason I already know she's gonna say it's too spicy for her. So I'm gonna let this continue cooking down so it can start thickening up a little bit. And we'll be back to add the Parmesan cheese. Now this has come to a boil, so I'm gonna lower the heat to simmer. See how it's thickening up nicely. This is when we wanna add our Parmesan cheese. This will help to continue thickening the sauce and it's gonna add a nice salty, cheesy, and nutty flavor from the Parmesan. If you like nutmeg, you can add nutmeg to this as well. I don't particularly like the taste of nutmeg in my creamed spinach, so I'm not gonna be doing that today. But if you like that flavor, then go ahead and add a pinch of nutmeg now, because that'll just elevate this creamed spinach nicely. So I'm gonna let this continue cooking just a little bit because we're basically done. We're also making mashed potatoes to go as a side. So I'm boiling these potatoes down while we wait the additional 15 minutes for our meatloaf to bake. So now I've melted two tablespoons of butter. Now that our potatoes are done, I've drained the potatoes and I'm slowly pouring them back into that same pot. I have this is a, the box. Yeah, watch Whoa. out. I have a little this helper and box. some warm milk. I'm only putting part of it because you don't want it to be too much and then you can't take any of the milk out and your potatoes end up super gummy. But we're gonna do a rustic mashed potato with the skin on. Do you like the potatoes? you like the potatoes? No. No, not today. She has her moments. No. My belly hurts. Your belly hurts now? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's why you don't like the potatoes. So I'm just gonna keep Great. mashing these. I'm gonna use more That's milk. Great. I love 
She's looking at the red wine vinegar bottle that's next to the stove. So I'm just going to continue mashing this. We're going to add some, watch out, Marnie. We're going to add some garlic salt as our salt and flavor at the same time. Yeah. And watch out, Mama. You add salt to taste if you want to add garlic salt. Or, yes, baby. Or whatever you want to add. It's chiquito. It's little. So I'm going to keep mashing this. This should be all done. And there's about 30 seconds left on our timer for the oven. So I'm excited about that. And someone else is excited too. So I'm going to leave this kind of lumpy. And I'm going to taste it. You guys have to taste your stuff. Mama, can you, can you eat it? Mm. That's delicious. So that's great right there. So let's get our meatloaf out of the oven. So now our meatloaf is out of the oven. You want to try it? Okay, hold on. Don't, don't, don't put this. She's trying to get the spoon in there. This is piping hot. It still seems kind of soft when I'm cutting. Let's see. That's well, fine. No. We're just gonna let this cool down. I'm just running the knife through the sides so it can come out of the pan nicely. And all of our sides are done as well. So we're gonna serve. All right, I'm gonna taste this before Marley gets in here, but look how nice this looks. First, I'm gonna go for my favorite, the cream spinach. Oh, it's amazing. It's just what you think creamed spinach could be. Even though I could have used more spinach. Let's stop playing. It's too much cream. The mashed potatoes are nice and creamy. I like the garlic salt. When you use garlic salt, you add flavor. Here she comes. And you add salt, of course. And now for the meatloaf. Hmm. It's surprisingly tasty. You can taste the sweetness of the bell peppers. You can taste the meat coming through, the soy sauce, the maple syrup. All those flavors combined and it tastes heavenly, guys. Now, if you wanted to make this whole thing vegan, because the meatloaf is vegan, you wanted to make the mashed potatoes vegan instead of adding cream, milk, half and half, whatever you put, and butter, I added milk. You would put full fat um, coconut milk, that way you don't have to add the butter. You can also add vegan butter if you wanted to. And I'm sure there's a million and one recipes for cream spinach, vegan cream spinach. I don't know of any right now off the top of my head. I would have to look that up. But you can make this full vegan instead of just vegetarian. Anyway, thanks for the idea, Miss Faye. This was delicious. I hope you like this video. If you do, hit like down below. Don't forget to subscribe for more recipes. Bon appétit.